Hi, my name is Hillel Sternlicht. Along with Ilya Glezerman, I authored the article entitled Hypercalcemia of Malignancy and New Treatment Options in the Current Issue of Therapeutics and Clinical Risk Management. Hypercalcemia of malignancy is quite common, affecting 20% of patients with cancer during the course of their disease. There are three mechanisms whereby malignancy causes hypercalcemia. The most common affecting 80% of those with hypercalcemia and often found in renal cell carcinoma as well as squamous cell carcinoma of any origin is parathyroid hormone related protein or PTHRP related disease. PTHRP related disease is due to the fact that PTHRP shares homology with PTH. As such, PTHRP activates the PTH receptor, which ultimately results in both increased bone resorption with the release of calcium, as well as increased calcium reclamation from the kidney. The second most common mechanism whereby malignancy and cancer results in hypercalcemia is due to direct metastatic invasion of bone. This occurs commonly in both breast cancer and occasionally in <clears throat> multiple, excuse me, often in multiple myeloma. In less than 1% of cases, hypercalcemia is mediated by 125-dihydroxyvitamin D. This is increased as the malignant cells recruit macrophages, which express 1-alpha-hydroxylase, which ultimately results in 125-dihydroxyvitamin D. Clinically, patients with hypercalcemia of malignancy often present with mal malaise, fatigue, lassitude, and with extreme elevations in calcium or rapid elevations in calcium frankencephalopathy. In terms of diagnosis of hypercalcemia of malignancy, there are several tests. Most importantly, PTHRP, PTH, and 1 and 125 dihydroxyvitamin D serum assays are indicated. In those with PTHRP related disease, PTHRP is of course elevated and PTH should be depressed. In those with metastatic disease, both PTH and PTHRP are depressed. Finally, in 125 dihydroxyvitamin D, both PTH and PTHRP are depressed and of course 125 dihydroxyvitamin D is elevated. Therapeutically, there are several interventions that one proposes. The most important thing initially is aggressive hydration with isotonic solutions. Diuretics are generally not preferred unless patients are suffering from oliguric renal failure, signs and symptoms of heart failure, or other symptoms of volume overload. At the time of administration of isotonic fluids, one can also administer calcitonin, which rapidly lowers serum calcium and works for two to three days. During this period, the diagnosis of hypercalcemia of malignancy can be clinched, and one can initiate bisphosphonate therapy, such as zoledronic acid or pomidronate, which will last for three to four weeks, ultimately allowing one to restart or start chemotherapy. Both pomidronate and zoledronic acid are incredibly safe, with less than 1% of patients experiencing osteonecrosis of the jaw. Two rare but important complications include acute tubular necrosis with zoledronic acid, often related to excessive dosing in patients with impaired renal function, and collapsing focal segmental glomerulosclerosis in those receiving excess doses of pomidronate, again vis-a-vis -vis renal function, as well as prolonged administration. For those with persistently elevated calcium or those who on presentation are frankly encephalopathic, dialysis with low <clears throat> calcium dialysate is indicated. For those with 125 dihydroxyvitamin D mediated cases, corticosteroids are the treatment of choice. Two emerging therapies for hypercalcemia include denosumab and sinicalcept. Denosumab is a monoclonal antibody to the rank L ligand and is highly effective in lowering serum calcium and is currently approved for bisphosphonate refractory hypercalcemia. Sinicalcet is a calcium 
that activates the calcium sensing receptor on the parathyroid hormone and while not approved for hypercalcemia malignancy is often used in refractory cases. In terms of prognosis, those with hypercalcemia malignancy have a very poor life expectancy, generally no more than three to six months. I hope this introduction was helpful and that the article will serve you well. If you have additional questions, the contact information for Elliot Lezerman, the senior author, can be found within the page.